Hello everybody, I've been running this Knock 05 cycling the battery for a couple of days, three days actually. And the setup for cycling is described in the first video of this series. If you haven't seen that, I would go back and watch that now if you're at all interested. It involves using a standard power load, a Nokogawa power meter, and the battery which was removed from my son's car because it stranded him on the motorway because he was parked with the lights on for 15 minutes in the fast lane during a hold up and when he went to start the car the battery was flat and it turns out that it has got about half of its capacity. Now there's various ways of testing this. I know that the correct way to test the capacity is to use the um, 25 test which is to divide the amp hourage capacity i.e. this one's a 50 amp hour battery by 25 and that's a discharge current and you run it down and that's the current that's used to test for to measure and assess the capacity of a new battery. Well this battery is not new, it's half knackered actually, so that's that. And it involves using this uh, Nokogawa uh, power meter, the uh, programmable load and these leads to discharge the battery. So I've been discharging the battery and recharging the battery with the Noko and um, we'll, in a moment we will look at, you can see at the moment it's in the reconditioning mode, you can see that flashing 12 volt, that's the recon mode and we have done some test cycles, we've assessed the capacity of the battery and now we're going to do the recon as recommended by Noco. and before the full review of the battery charger we're just going to check this recon mode to see whether it can make any positive impact on the capacity of this battery so let's switch to the computer and have a look at the results of the test and cycling so far and then when that's complete I will show you the waveforms um, and what's actually happening, I've got the current probe engaged, I've got uh, voltage and the battery which has been fully charged on, in the book and the instructions it says that you have to engage this after a normal charge is fully completed. So it's had 24 hours on charge and I've just switched it onto the recon mode. All right? So after this, tomorrow probably, we'll assess, we'll do the discharge test again and see whether we've improved this battery by use of this recon mode, right? So onto the computer, then after that we'll look at the waveforms, actually what it's doing in recon mode. So over to the computer. Right, okay, let's have a look at these results. You can see here I've done five tests so far, or five cycles so far, and this is when the battery, cycle one up here on the left, is when the battery first came out of the car, uh, charged with an LD auto excess battery charger and charged for 24 hours until it was complete. 10 amp distance, discharge current. Termination voltage is set to 10.6. So when it gets to 10.6, the current switches off and the amp power capacity is measured. And then down here is the over here on the right is the temperature. And one hour afterwards, I just measured the voltage on the battery to what it had uh, relaxed after one hour back to 11.91 you can see the voltage is down here and then after an hour's rest put it back on for another 24 hour charge and then repeat the charge again and you can see as discussed in the last video look it started off at 25.42 and it's dropping by 1.19 amp hours the drop here is just the calculation subtraction of this from that one uh, from the previous so we see we get a um, a regular each time we do this cycle down to 10.6 volts at 10 amps, you can see the battery is wearing out or being damaged, if I'd say. As you know, when the battery is charged, both plates get covered with lead sulfate, and then as you recharge, the lead sulfate is then electrolyzed back into uh, sulfuric acid. In theory, if it was a perfect process, you would end up with the same capacity each time. But you can see it's dropping, and on the three Aldi auto excess charges, tests one, two, and three, you can see it dropped by 1.19 and 0.54. At that point, when it read uh, on the after test three, test four was then charged with the uh, Noco Genius 5 and then discharged. And we got 22.1. So we had quite a big drop with the, uh, the Noco, and it, it dropped by 6.7% in the capacity after we'd done the complete charge right until the green light had stopped flashing it was connected to the charge of 24 hours okay now so we've done those tests and you can see look 22.10 so any improvement over 22.10 after the reconditioning uh, cycle which we're on at the moment would show that reconditioning 
of one cycle of re reconditioning has some effect. If we see 21.5 or 20, it's had no effect. If we see 21.5 or more, then it would be okay. But if we saw something significant increase here, then we know the reconditioning uh, charge, the reconditioning cycle from the Noco Genius 5 had actually done us some good. Okay. So anyway, this we're on step five at the moment. I'm just going to switch back to the scope in a minute and show you what the reconditioning signals are from the charger. And then afterwards, we'll do the um, cycle number six, I should say which will be the repeat this cycle for of a di same discharge, same conditions, and let's see what capacity we get. Let's see if it's improved the battery at all in terms of the amp hour capacity. We're not talking about the cold cranking amps or anything else. We'll have to do another test on that. But this is the progress so far, and I thought you might be interested. So let's switch back to the scope and have a look at what it's actually doing. All right, I'll just show you the connections we've got for the current monitoring of this uh, reconditioning mode. In the negative battery lead, this one, We've got the Tektronics current probe, and that's set up to give you 10 amps per volt. So one amp, uh, sorry, one volt uh, deflection on the scope equals 10 amps. Okay. Now the bandwidth of this probe falls off dramatically below 100 hertz. So you can see short current durations, but a DC current will just show as a decaying uh, current to zero because it is an inductive pickup. Okay. So there is a bandwidth associated with this. Uh, which we can talk about when we look on the scope, all right? So here we've got the negative connection of the battery charger. Just goes through this fuse. It's a 3.15 amp little fuse, rectangular fuse block onto the negative terminal. And the reason I've done that is because it has got a resistance, a normal DC resistance of 20 milliohms, so that the scope is now calibrated so that both the the current measurement from the voltage drop across that resistor, 20 milliohm resistor, and I've tried this, uh, disconnecting this and putting it straight on the terminal, and it makes very little difference to the current uh, flowing in the reconditioning pulses from the charger. So it's a way of sensing the voltage. So that's a, a direct measure of current because I've got a scope probe, at the earth post is grounded, and we're measuring the voltage being generated across this 20 milliohm resistor, okay, which is the fuse, which is acting as a very low, uh, low ohmage resistor. All right. So on the scope, we'll get two traces, which show you the current from the current probe, uh, which has got some bandwidth limitations, but it doesn't kick into frequencies below one, about 100 hertz. So you can do the math on the uh, time constant for that. And then we've got this, which will give us the actual DC voltage and if there's any long pulses or something we can see it on the voltage generated by the current flowing through this 20 milliamp resistor okay onto the battery terminal post so I'll just set it up on the scope so we can talk about the waveform and we'll carry on okay so here's the scope display this is what we're seeing oh, look we've got a big red dot from the scope just there by the way let's give it a tape stick on that there's a red glow there you go <laughs> Right, the first thing I can say is that the, um, it's reconditioning mode. Um, the only light that's on is flashing is the 12 volt reconditioning light. And I have to say, I can hear a click. Every time that pulse fires off, I can hear a click. Now the top trace is the current from the uh, current probe. So if we just speed up the time base slightly and move it over. Right, so if we just select channel two, I think we're on, no, we're on channel one, select channel two, move that down there. Oh, right, so the top one is the current pulse, and we said 10 amps per volt, didn't we? So you can see what it's doing, so it's charging an output capacitor, and then presumably turning on a 25 or 30 amp FET or something like that, to discharge that capacitor through the uh, battery and give a pulse of current. So 10 amps per volt is uh, 10, 20, 30, about 34 amp pulse. Now the duration of that pulse, we're on a time base of 200 microseconds, so it's very low energy in that pulse. The pulse is lasting probably about 80, 80 uh, microseconds. So you can see it's a quick pulse as it discharges the power into the battery. Now the, the, the trace below is the actual current uh, through that 20 milliohm resistor. So that's the voltage across that 20 ohm resistor in the yellow trace. And you can see the current is ba basically the same current because um, I've calibrated the scope 
by doing some math on the trace so that the both currents there represent the same magnitude all right so but you can see um, on the blue trace you can see here that the um, the trace drops down quickly and then rolls off whereas if actually in real term you've got the decay of the capacitor uh, charge more represented as a, a standard curve exponential curve basically is what you would expect and it, ex it exponentially curves back to zero so the bottom trace is the actual current and top trace is the the current peak check just to check that we've got an actual accurate reading from the scope it's a, not connected to anything electrically it's an inductive pickup it's a tetronics probe cost me about 1800 pounds so i think we can believe that that is accurate all right so that's what's happening and if i just slow down the time base Okay, so we've slowed the time base down now, and now the time base is set to... So you can see that those spikes, that cycle, is happening every uh, one, two seconds, just under two seconds, all right? So it's like 1.9 seconds or something, it's, uh, it's firing off, and that's what's happening. And it's going to go on doing that, presumably, for 12 hours. It says it's on the timer, and the reconditioning can last up to 12 hours. I'll try and catch it because I can hear it ticking and I'm working away here so when I stop when I hear the ticking d disappear I'll know that it's finished um, yeah and that's what you get and if you just if we just speed this up slightly again now and move that over Can you see the 0 volt rail is here? This is the no voltage flowing from the charger uh, here at this point on the trace. We get the pulse, then we get the decay of the capacitor, but you can see the actual, it looks like the um, charger is recharging the capacitor from the actual battery. Can you see that? Because it's going below the negative line. If I put this on auto now, put it on auto mode and unplug that trace, you can see the 0 volt line is there, there's nothing plugged in there and if I plug it back in stick it on normal you can see this area here it's flowing back up so it looks like to prevent the jack battery becoming grossly overgassed or overcharged it looks like it is actually drawing current back from the battery into the charger to recharge that capacitor so it's kind of interesting that. Now, someone in the comments uh, asked me to, what did they ask me to do? They asked me to display the battery voltage, which I can do by doing this. So we won't probably see anything. So if I just trigger off the second. Right, I had to engage math mode to get this to work. Um, due to the high currents flying around the place, it was causing problems with induced voltages. So I've got a differential probe on there now, and the differential probe is displayed here. I need something light to stick. Yeah, I'd like to stick. Here we are. Can you see that? Can't see that either, can you? Can you see my finger? Yeah, look. So this is the voltage across the battery. There's the current spike we saw, which is a positive current spike. We measured by the current probe, and we're triggering from that. These are the two voltage things from the mass, so ignore the uh, violet and the yellow. It's the purple one you're interested in. So if I just speed that up slightly, you can see during the spike we're on on that we're on 500 millivolts per division. Okay, so it's a times 10 probe. Okay, so that's what you're getting. You're getting a 750 millivolt spike here in this first part, and it drops down and then it floats back down to the ambient uh, battery voltage. You know, with zero current flowing. And that happens after how many milliseconds are around 50 microseconds so it's not very long is it five uh, 50 100 150 200 250 by three by about 400 microseconds everything's back to the normal quiescent voltage so current and voltage at uh, 
500 millivolts per division, okay? Right, on the purple line. Don't look at the, uh, the pinky violet and the yellow because that's the uh, that's one of the part of the mass operators, which I, I, I'm sure I can turn off but I haven't worked out how to do it. So that's what's happened to the battery voltage during the spike. Right, okay, so we'll, let's, um, let's, yeah, let's quit that. All right, so it's chunktering away here, flashy, flashy. Uh, I'm going to leave it on for however long it takes and try and catch it when it goes off so I can tell when it when it went off. And then, um, so that's the recharge mode or the recondition mode or actually repair mode. It says in the manual it repairs, it repairs the battery back to its original state to full functionality. Well, we'll see. We should see an improvement in the amp hour, shouldn't we? I know it's not the cold cranking, but we're working on capacity at the moment. We'll do some cranking stuff later on in the series of videos. So um, the next video, the beginning of the next video will be the results of this and a, the results of the power cycle, the uh, discharge run to see whether this did improve it or not on this slightly iffy battery over there. And then we'll get into the guts of our and we'll do some proper parametric testing of all these modes on the system and see what the voltages are and the accuracy and the temperature compensation. And that will be in video three. But that's it for today because I've got work to do. I hope you enjoyed that. If you can leave me a, a like or a subscribe down there or leave me a like, I'd appreciate it for my efforts. And uh, any comments, then drop them down below. I read everything that was dropped on the first one and I'm trying to take into account. OK, so let me know how I'm doing. OK. Uh, Good luck and uh, stay safe.